insects, insect control in winter canola is uh, fast changing. Uh, it's, it's full of surprises, and we're doing our best. But um, I want to go over some of the big guys <coughs> this year that were major players, and then we'll compare some of the this year's information to last year. We have a couple different weather situations. Last year we had a cold, wet, long winter. This winter we had cold but fairly dry, so we have some different um, insects showing their um, heads and being more of a problem depending on those conditions. So, okay, so one of the big ones, <clears throat> though it's sporadic, we have seen it more often in the last uh, two or three years, are the army cutworms. And these guys are basically, um, they can start in the fall, <clears throat> go through the winter, and what you don't want is to um, ignore looking for them. If, if you feel like you have some um, areas showing up, the plants are dying, things are being cut off at the, uh, the stalks are being cut off at the ground level, you want to investigate. These guys, you need to dig down into the soil around the base of the plant because you're not often going to find them just out and about um, during the daytime and stuff. <clears throat> Thresholds, we have four to five per square foot, something you need to uh, take action on. As you can see in the photograph, that's a field where nothing was stuck. And that was um, 320 acres lost, cut from out in western Oklahoma last year. So something to pay attention to. We had some issues with them this year, but they um, fortunately didn't cover the entire western half of the state. Aphids, always the big, big problem with canola, depending on the year. We have three different kinds in canola. We have the turnip aphids, which you need to start looking for, scouting for, uh, from the fall to late winter. Best prevention is seed treatments. Um, if you don't put a seed treatment down, you're probably going to lose most of your canola. So, uh, And it's been working fairly well. The green peach. This is a, uh, an interesting situation with these guys. They were thought to be from fall through early spring. We have found them active from fall all the way through um, uh, harvest, basically. And we have seen them feeding on the entire plant, not just on leaves, but stalks, uh, flowers, buds, pods. We've seen them just drop all the pods from a plant by feeding on the stem from the, from the stalk to the pod. So um, these guys, the threshold, 100 to 200 per plant, depending on the time of year. This year it's dry, so you want to go a little lower on that threshold, um, probably 50 to 100, depending on your moisture and things like that. They, um, cabbage aphid, late spring through early ripening, these again, um, usually considered just uh, feeders on flowers, that kind of thing. That's not what we're seeing. Um, that we're seeing them feed on pods, the stalk, leaves. We're finding them everywhere. So um, the whole plant needs to be examined. And scouting again is the best medicine for these guys. Um, treatment. We don't have a good threshold for cabbage aphids since they're kind of late in the season. We are working on that. We have some re research going on in Perkins in the or in Oklahoma on the farm there, trying to look at the economic value of these late insecticide applications. Fortunately, we don't have solid data on that for you yet. But if you are finding greater than 15% um, infection, you need to treat because we're, we have seen uh, yield loss from these guys. So um, again, frequent scouting is the thing to do with the aphids. They were a nightmare last year, this year, after the first application in March, for most of the producers that I've worked with, they haven't been a problem since. However, this guy, the false chinch bug, has been a nightmare for us in northern, northern central, central and northern Oklahoma, really, this year. Um, the drier counties, they have just been hammered, absolutely hammered by these guys. High populations, like I said, Initially, it looked like maybe winter kill, but as we got to examining them and watching it, um, we were seeing more of the buds destroyed, they brown, and the pods are really stunted. The 
plants can be stunted in development. Um, we, we know they're feeding on the pods. If you notice in the picture on the far side, the little circles, those are the, the uh, wounds caused by their feeding. And uh, the sap that comes out of those, or the, the juice, um, it is an attractant to other pests because it's sweet. And we've seen other pests and they're feeding on that. So it kind of compounds the problem. <clears throat> so it's something to pay attention to. If uh, these guys can swarm, and you walk through a canola and you're just like, get away from me, kind of, and you, they're just all over you. So if they hit that point, you're in serious trouble. Thresholds, this year, the damage was significant enough that uh, greater than 140 per head was probably a little high. We should have probably treated a little sooner than that. So you can see there's varying degrees of, of threshold for each of the parts of the plant. But we have seen significant yield loss in acreage, based on acreage this year, especially in the north. Diamondback moth, does it cause damage? Is it something we need to treat? It's still kind of up in the air. Um, fall through early spring, start scouting at emergence because they, the larvae can really hammer um, seedlings. They overwinter in the plant crowns, and so they're hard to see. One of the best ways to do uh, to check for them in the winter is to pull a plant and take a piece of white paper and shake them out and see if you can get knock them out of the crown of the plant. Because um, they, if they feed in there, they can really uh, limit the plant's ability to recover after the winter. So um, they can hide in the crowns. Look for them there. Um, you see the the kind of shot holes that they <coughs> put in the leaves, that kind of thing. No thresholds. We're still trying to figure out what kind of problem they are or if they are a problem at all. But they are often in our canola in Oklahoma. We've had a couple of years with some problems with the cabbage root maggot. Cold, wet growing conditions last year made sense. This year it doesn't make sense because we've had dry conditions but we've had problems in some areas with uh, fields infected with these uh, maggots. They can uh, hollow out the stem and the plants just fall over. Or you walk by, knock them and they fall over. And you pull them out and it looks like they've just worn a hole all the way up the stem. They feed at the roots and at, inside the, um, the stem area. So they're hard to see. Uh, one of the problems with the adults is that they're Flight activity is over such a long period of time, it's hard to uh, use spring insecticide applications. Uh, they just keep coming. So um, these guys, we don't have a threshold for either that's been very effective. Um, cultural controls, keeping wild mustards and things like that under control near your fields, that helps somewhat. So these are the major players that we've seen in the last couple of years. 